Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Going to be some changes made here. Praise the Lord. So they have an order in God's house here. Thank you, Jesus. You parents better teach your children. Listen to this. This is important what I'm getting ready to say. Y'all teach your children. As a matter of fact, you be careful what you say around your children concerning Bishop. Because I'm moving in an anointing. And I don't disrespect these children, and they're not going to disrespect me. Amen. And when I send word for somebody to tell them to do something, and Bishop said, I bet not to hear no back talk, Bishop, nothing. If I have to leave the podium and come out there and deal with you, I will deal with you. Amen. You're going to honor order in the house. Hmm? Amen. You're going to honor the anointing. Amen. You parents might let them smart off to you and get by, but it ain't happening here. I'm standing here in God's stead, a man of God, and I'm not going to have it, and God ain't going to have it. Huh? There was children that came out and began to mock the preacher, called him a bald-head preacher, and God sent two she bears and killed them all, 40-some children. Uh, see, I don't place myself in that arena to give you a right. It'd be different when we place ourselves in that arena. But see, I don't place myself in that arena. Uh, you parents better let them know, don't, tell them, don't even go to that arena. You see, God will release some on them you can't even pray off. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. We're going to honor God in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Huh? Don't thank you. You're not indispensable. Because you are when you're hindering the work of the Lord. Huh? Your age ain't got nothing to do with it. Your abilities don't have nothing to do with it. Your mom and daddy ain't got nothing to do with it. Were you hindering the work of the Lord? Hmm? Amen. So you hindering me if I had to go to this arena. I should be able to go right on and minister into the word. But when I have to go to that arena, you're hindering the work of the Lord. You're hindering the anointing. Huh? In one way, yes, I am a mere man. But in another way, I'm not just a mere man. I am God's mouthpiece for the hour. Yes. Yes. And y'all need to begin to recognize that. Hallelujah. Huh? I'm a prophet and an apostle. I can call and release things. Amen. Hmm? You've already seen the handiwork of God, but things that God so profoundly speaks. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. And God don't want you to stand up his man. Amen. We're all going to start learning some order here. We're going to start recognizing and honoring the anointing. Because I don't put myself in any level at all, for in any of you, in any way disrespectful. So don't you dare go to that arena with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you love Jesus, say yes. yes. Hallelujah. Honor the Lord tonight. Honor him. Mm. God is doing some very profound things. Very profound things. Amen. He's yet going to do some profound things here in and among us. We stay faithful and true to God. There's no limit to what God is going to unveil to us. Praise the Lord. To 
tonight in the word of the Lord. Tonight in the word of the Lord. I want you to go again to the book of James. Fourth chapter. See how peaceable it is? All that mess ain't standing around the atmosphere now. Uh huh. <laughs> See the difference? Huh? That spirit done told them kids, you just come in and do it, just disrupt talking. Uh uh. Oh no. Hmm? So get ready. I will call you out in front of everybody. And rebuke you openly. If that spirit's bold enough to do it, then I'm bold enough to challenge it. <laughs> and if we want to go to the spirit arena, let's go. Because I've had some real experience in that arena. <laughs> real experience. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And there have been some things that Bishop has prophesied concerning people's lives. It don't look like it ain't coming yet, but it's coming. you just flowing in the grace of God, but it's coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the book of James, the fourth chapter, I love you just enough to tell you the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. See, this, this type of warning is to save you, to protect you. Mm -hmm. It really is. It really is. It is to protect you. Amen. Praise the Lord. In the fourth chapter of the book of James, and verses 1 and 2, I'm going to read that and we're going to move into this next part of this teaching. See, what we experience tonight is nothing more than these young people being connected to spirits and stuff. Uh huh. That's all it is. Hmm? Attitudes and things that, you know. Hmm. And that shows you just how real this teaching is. How adaptable we can become to the flow in that spirit realm. Praise the Lord. And see, what we have to learn is when we allow ourselves to venture into that arena, you can be taken out there so far and don't know how to get back. Amen. Amen. In the first verse of the fourth chapter of the book of James. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not, because ye ask not. Is it not the source, is not the source of the waging of these wars within us, is not the source pleasure that the soul desires? That's where the war is waged in the pleasure of the soul, in the pleasure of the soul. As we've been looking into this, thank God for what he has been releasing to us concerning this. I was uh, speaking with one of the pastors today, and uh, he said, Bishop, he said, that teaching... He said, I, I, it's, it's yet. He said, so many things were just uncovered and 
so much ground broken. He said, God has taken me to another revelation. Praise the Lord. To help the people understand mm -hmm. everything that took place. Amen, amen. That it uncovered so many things and brought so many things forward to surface. And the reason for that is we as a people, as the body of Christ, not only is it a mandate but from God for others, but it's a must for us. It's really a must or have to for us. And I, I, I believe that so many times we hear uh, warnings coming from the pulpit so often that uh, we become numb. Mm -hmm. Just like a parent to a child constantly saying the same thing. Eventually, even though that child's right there sitting at the table, they block it out. Because they'll come up, I heard that. I've already heard that. Huh? Mm -hmm. And they become numb hmm? to the reality of really what's being spoken. And many times, the things that come to us with such power and prevalency, they really come so frequently that uh, we just toss it off as the normal. When I'm here to tell you tonight, this ministry is not moving in a normal way. It's just not normal things that are taking place. It's really not. It is really not normal. <laughs> the, the, the brother God has sent to us to supervise and help us with this building project. Of course, we are experiencing the miracles firsthand because we're firsthand involved. But we went to the place, uh, Home Depot. And they had this poster or, or pamphlet or whatever on, on the counter. And it said, by February the 16th, no more discounts of any kind. He said, take one of those. He said, see the miracle? I said, yeah. See, when God, if we'd have waited 30 days later, to start this project, mm -hmm. we'd have missed all this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but back in September, right. when we had our business meeting, I said to the board, I said, God said, we got to do this now. It's right now. This old saying is, the hunters say, well, you got to have all your ducks in a row. <laughs> we didn't have, in the natural, we had no, matter of fact, we didn't have no ducks on the pond. <laughs> But I said, brothers, God said, we got to do, he was in there. I said, he says, now we can't wait. Mm -hmm. And at the first day that we began was the first day of the day that God had prophesied to the brother that he was going to semi-retire and build a church. One day, just before the day of his birthday, we started that project. And every, everything has fell in the proper place. God has sent us to buy things at the time when he lets the prices drop. Praise God. And you know why that's happening? I'm going to tell you why that's happening. It's not just us involved. Matter of fact, it has a little bit to do with us. <laughs> it's all got to do with God. And what God is saying, see how you can flow into the ultimate of my miracles if you'll just be sensitive to me and shed and get broken from these things that are disrupting within your pleasures and your emotions and past. see you missing he said you're missing so much and every since the first day 
We even had a piece of machinery on the ground from the first day we actually broke bread. There's been a miracle take place every day. Every day. We've been able to witness the people left and right. Left and right. We have one of the people that's supplying the wiring. And God just timed everything. He just timed everything. So we're going to save thousands of dollars by making the decision one day early. <laughs> That's awesome. By making a decision just one day prior to a price change. Hmm. He said to us, and we begin to share with this young man, he said, you know, if you'd have decided to do this last week, it would have cost you thousands of dollars more. He said, but because of the day you selected, just before you selected, the price dropped. <laughs> and then God speaks and said, lock everything in. And we have been buying supplies and materials as needed. And we're down on really the countdown of everything. And so, before January the 16th, we'll go in and finalize everything. Hmm? And finalize everything and have the supplies bought. We went to a place Thursday to buy these expensive screws. <laughs> and the guy said, it's going to be such and such. And the brother said, oh, he said, okay, I'll drop it in this. And as he went into the office to get the money, he said, forget it, just take them. Oh, <laughs> <All right. laughs> Don't give me anything, just take them. Just take them. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> forget it, just take them. Mm. Timing, mm -hmm. sequence, tuned in. Timing, sequence, and being tuned in. Now catch it. Timing, but in the timing there's a sequence. See, we're in the right time to build, but we're also in the right sequence to buy. God is allowing us to buy according to unknown markets. See, those big companies know ahead of time when prices are going to raise and drop. And so, but you, the consumer, don't know that. Mm -hmm. But God has been allowing us to go to select it when it drops. Right. When all the bargains are on. Yeah. Right. And we said to them, you mean even churches won't get He said, nobody will get this anymore. Hmm. Not only have we been getting 10%, we've been getting free. Free delivery. Praise the Lord. <laughs> A normal trip to Paris from Home Depot is close to $50 a trip. And they've made two trips in a day. And it's all marked across the bottom of the order sheet. Free Whoa. delivery. 10% off. Awesome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now here's what I want you to catch on this. Yeah. You're under an anointed covering. That's right. This cannot happen without affecting you. Praise the Lord. This cannot happen without affecting you. This does not happen without you being affected. 
because you have a spirit and soul tie to the ministry. Why you need to be careful so you don't sever it. Amen. Mm. It says here the source from which this war is waged is from within the soul. As we were looking on Wednesday night, God powerfully speaking to us. Yeah. Very powerfully speaking to us. We found through the scripture how that there are hereditary bondages. Hereditary bondages that we can become slaves to. They come from the heritage. Hmm? See, there's also a natural heritage and a spiritual heritage. So you got to be in ministries where the leaders are building a proper spiritual heritage because you're tied to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. There are a lot of folk in churches that are under bad spiritual heritage. They're tied to things that are detrimental to their lives. Their spiritual walk. Hmm. Tonight as we look at this, we were sharing with you on Wednesday that sin affects the family tree. Mm -hmm. Sin affects the family tree. We opened that up. We were talking about Cain. Remember that? That's right. And God confronted him and said, where, where, where is your brother? Am I, am I my brother's, brother's keeper? keeper? Huh? And then we see, we spoke about his son, Lamech. Did the same thing his father did and brought it up. He said, if my father was avenged seven times, then what I've done it should be 70 times seven and be avenged. Mm -hmm. hmm? My father killed his brother because I got mad because God honored his sacrifice over mine. And let me said, I killed two men because one wounded me and the other just hit me. They did something I didn't like. But where did he get that from? He got it from his father. Hmm? Cain picked up that spirit from his mother. Hmm. Bishop, are you saying tonight that we are not to love our relatives? Oh, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we got to learn how to get disconnected from the bondages of family trees. That's right. Hmm? Amen. And I'm a, woo, God. A lot of times you wonder why your children are so rebellious and small like you, because that's what you do toward the ministry. They're looking at you and saying, if you bold enough to speak what you're speaking against, then we bold enough to stand up against you. And you know why you can't handle them? You know why you can't rebuke that spirit out of them? You know why it looks like they're taking control of the situation? Because you got out of order. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you something. And when you get out of order with the leadership of ministry, and you come to me and say, could you pray for my children? I can't really get them released. Because, see, you're the first covering. And you've already closed the door. You already set the stage. You already put the atmosphere out there. Of your spirit of dislike. Because things didn't go your way. And then you're going to come to the man of God and ask him to pray into your arena when he really came. Because you already released something over that atmosphere. Woo! See, that's talking out of both sides of your mouth. 
At one point, you don't want to honor it, but at another point, you want it. That's double-mindedness. Double and God is saying, how do you think that the man of God can release a release into this when you already was fighting against it? Because hmm. he can only release the anointing and you was already mad at the anointing. I'm going to open some eyes tonight. Oh, yeah. Hmm? Mm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And we, 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 we see this very thing take place. Covering, covering is very important. Covering is very important. Covering is very important. How we release to others is going to affect others. Hmm? How we release around our family is going to affect them, kids. Sure is. Yes, it is. Sure enough is. Hmm? Hmm. We see here as we looked into this, I'm going to pray, but I'm just getting the introduction right now. We're going to see how the God spoke to Abram, we read that on Wednesday night. And what did he tell him to do? He said, leave yeah. your relatives and leave your country. Your country. Right. Catch it? God put it in a personal way because God knew he had a relation. He had, he had a tie there. He said, leave your relatives and leave your country. Mm -hmm. <laughs> huh? For a reason. Amen. See, the country represented locale, mm -hmm. surrounding, position. Hmm? Because he's saying within that locale, within that positional range, Abram, there's some things that have been released there because of your father. <laughs> and here's what he was saying. And he shows us two things here. He tells them to leave literally, but there's a spiritual connotation. See, sometimes we can literally leave a relative, but we never get released from the locale. And what was released in that location? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I, 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 see, I can get personal. I, I have family members that I love. Hmm? But they have some hereditary bondages that I can't remain in that locale. Hmm? I have some relatives that say, but they cry babies. I don't care when you see them, they're crying about something. Whoa, whoa, you know. You know, it, it's always a negative with a positive. I'm all right, but. Feeling pretty good, but. Everything's going pretty well, but you should have seen me last night. I can't deal in that locale. And I don't deal in that locale. And it may seem like I'm mean, and, but hey, I'm not carrying that kind of load. Because <laughs> you hang around sep pity folk long enough. You'll start adding negatives with positives. I'm not saying things don't never go wrong. I'm just, no, that's not what I, because that's reality. Hmm? But you have the right and the choice to choose if you're going to care that or not. Oh, I've had ups and downs and obstacles, disappointments and whatever, but I chose not to allow that to control me. Mm -hmm. was, it, was I sensitive to it? Yes. Did I feel the pain? Yes. Have you ever cried about anything? Sure have. 
and probably will cry some more. But I choose not to be held a victim to that type of locale. Hmm? You'll find that if you come into my office and we counsel very long at all, I will not allow you to stay in a negative arena. Because I don't want that released in my office. I don't want that released in my atmosphere and my books and stuff. <laughs> I want to get on the book. I've like had that. folk come in my office, and when they left, I said, in the spirit, go with them. Go right with them. I know that's Because right. I got to come in and seek God. I don't want that hover. Go right with them. And I send it right out the door before they get it shut. That's right. That's right. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all been in that office, and you can't help yourself but just release. Because there's a spirit of release in there. You tell him things you didn't even tell. Right. <laughs> you just going and thinking, my God, I ain't gonna tell him that. Why? I done released the spirit of release in that. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
I thought about this, and uh, I, 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 I really thank God for what the Lord is imparting. Because I'm here to tell you, since September, I have not been able to avail myself to the time of study that I normally study. I mean, there were times I'd go six, seven, eight hours a day just in the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I do good now to get an hour. Hmm? Mm. Amen. That's a big change. So uh, God has shown me, son, you really got to be dependent upon me. Mm -hmm. Huh? I'm saying, God, I, I need a fresh revelation. Huh? Yeah. You know what the Lord spoke to me? He says, son, this has got to be. He said, but because you're going to do what I tell you, he said, I'm going to give you revelations you never studied for. He said, because through it all, my people yet have to be ministered That's to. That's right. And he said, because you're willing to take this sacrifice, honoring my house. He said, I'm going to anoint you that much more and give you even a greater revelation. And y'all been getting greater revelations in the lifetime of study. You know you have. Huh? Times at two or three o'clock in the morning, reading and going to sleep and waking up and be almost three o'clock and read and write and maybe two or three words and fall asleep again. Then when it comes time, God just unveiled it in a mighty way. Hmm. He was giving me stuff while I was sleeping, didn't even know. It. <laughs> <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> Glory to God. Hmm. Somebody said, man, that, that would be okay. Don't have to read and nothing like that, but see, hey, I got sense enough to know right. that's not going to last. Right. I'm, ju I'm just pushed into a, a different uh, arena right now. Right. But see, when, it, when everything's said and done, I got to go back to. Right. <laughs> In the book. Huh? Amen. And if I try it any other way, I'll lose it. That's right. And I got sense enough to know that. <laughs> In that 12th chapter and verse 1 we hear God directly himself God himself speaking to Abram Genesis chapter 12 we hear the Lord himself now this is powerful it really is this is powerful this is powerful Even though the Bible lets us know that Abraham's righteousness was because of his faith. Because of his faith. In a lot of cases, Abraham didn't have no faith. Mm -hmm. But God said, your righteousness is because of your faith. I'm going to show you something here. God honored Abraham's faith to account him for righteousness when he was willing to leave what he had been attached to from day one. Mm -hmm. Abram lied. Mm -hmm. There were times he even disobeyed God. But God said, I count righteousness to you because of your faith. And you know what it was? He had faith enough to believe God to leave what he'd been attached to from day one, from where he got his original information in his spirit, from where his original emotions had been developed from. He was telling Abram, leave everything you know. Because he didn't know anything else outside of where he was at. Come on now. Now that's, that's an awesome task. And a tremendous thing for one to ask you to leave everything you know. Everything you're comfortable with. Everything you're familiar. And go to some place you don't know nothing about. What you're saying, God was saying, Abraham, if you're willing to cut that, 
then I'll give you a new attachment. I'll give you a new soul tie. Now think about this. When God speaks to us and shows us things we need to be severed from and says, trust me, what's he saying? Now I'm going to become connected to you in this area where I never was connected to you before. And since I'm God, I can lead you, guide you, and direct you into all truth. God said, I counted Abram's righteousness, his faith, as his righteousness. His believing, I counted that righteousness, right standing, right standing, right standing, right position. Did Abram do everything right? No. See, in this life, we're not going to do everything right. But if we'll believe God, we'll stay in right standing. We can stay in the right position. To get things corrected that we might do wrong. Huh? But if you don't stand right standing, you can't get it corrected. Mm -hmm. Y'all just catch that revelation? Oh, yeah. Read verse. Start the first verse. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation mm -hmm. and I will bless thee yes and make thy name great yes and thou shalt be a blessing now Paul's right there he said you're going to be blessed I'm going to make your name great I'm going to make a great nation from you God was saying to Abram from your loins there's greatness that you didn't know was there and could not be developed until you got disconnected. In other words, through your loins will flow greatness as long as you can get bad soul ties disconnected from stopping the flow. Hmm. Now I'm going to show you something. Y'all kind of missed it, but I'm going to show you something. Go back to the 11th chapter. And go to verse 29. Read verse 29. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah. Mm -hmm. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishka. 30? Yes. And Sarah was barren. She had no child. Now, Sarah was barren and could not have children. She already knew that. She already knew that her body could not produce. But Abram took her as his wife. Then we hear God say to Abram, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. So you will be a blessing if you cut soul ties that's cutting off the flow to your blessing. Did y'all catch it there? Let's read verse 2. Now listen, of the 12th chapter. And I will make of thee a great nation. I'm going to make you a great nation. Now a nation is made up of people. What makes a nation great of people is the resources. Think about it. There could be millions of people in a nation, but not be great because they don't have resources. 
there are countries that have more people in, in the United States, but they're weak, destitute countries because they have no resources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you hear what he's saying? Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you a great nation. That means I'm going to cause many people to come from you, but yet there's going to be the proper resources to bring you to a place of greatness. Resources to bring you to recognition of greatness. Read. I will bless, I'm sorry, and I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. Now listen to this. I'm going to show you something else. He said, I'm going to make you a great nation. Now watch this, watch this. He said, I'm going to make you a great Can't flow because of bad soul ties. Then it's going to affect those that's under the covering. Absolutely. The nation wasn't going to become great until Abram done something. Wasn't going to be no nation. Wasn't going to be no resources until Abram done something. That's right. Was God was even showing Abram right. He said, listen, soul tie connections. Mm -hmm. Spirit of soul tie connections. Mm -hmm. If you break them, then I'll do something through you and let somebody else experience greatness through you because you choose to cut Hereditary bondages. That's powerful, sir. Ooh, that's wonderful. Woo. Mm. Let me bring you back on this level. When you are willing to break and cut hereditary bondages and you flow in greatness, then that's going to flow to your kids. Because you're that covering. You cannot speak and dictate greatness over your children when your greatness has been cut off by hereditary sin. Because you're their covering. Oh, God. In a nation of greatness, there are authoritative realms. Power. Hear what God is saying to this man? He said, I'll make of you a great nation and I will bless you and even your catch this now what the next part even your make that name name great. name name say name name what's in a name <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole lot in the name yes it is Your character names you. Oh, y'all thought the name your parents gave you named you. No. <laughs> Here's not a face. It. There are thousands, probably millions of Janes and Judys and Johns and Joes. Right? Right. But when you know the character of a particular Joe, he's different from the other Joe. I know that's right. You might know 15 James. That's right. But if one of those James got a bad character and you say, Jane, so and so, yeah, I know her. Yeah. Right, right, right. I know that's right. Now, you know what he said? He said, I will make your character great. Mm. And then he says, and so you shall be. So you shall be. Now catch it. He's changed. He said, I'll change your being to another being. And you shall be a. Now catch it. You shall become blessed. Your identity will be blessed. Your character will be blessed. You now, identity, will be blessed. You shall be A, or you shall be the. You are now the being of. Your name is blessed. 
<laughs> what you say? What you say? <laughs> All that sounds good, don't it? But what was the conditions for this? Read verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of Go the country. Go forth from your country. Now all these things that God has told us sound so good and wonderful and with a mouth is water and tongue hanging out. But it will not flow through your veins until you get broken from these hereditary bondages. Woo! Go forth from your country and do what? And from thy kindred. And from your relatives. And? See, kindred, you know, kinfolk, kin. Kindred comes from the word kind. Get away from your kind. <laughs> <laughs> the word kindred comes from the word K-I-N-D. Right. Kind. Because right. the kind that you're around... Is stopping the flow. Because the kind you're around, you're thinking like they thinking. You make a decision like they make a decision. You're getting in the same bondage as they're getting in because why? You are a relative or relative which takes on the word relation. Sean means action. You are connected to an action from a kind that is not flowing in the things of... That's powerful. I, I, there's been no additional studying on this. Matter of fact, and I'm almost ashamed to say it. I am ashamed to say it. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've been able to open my Bible today. I'm ashamed to say that. But is that a powerful revelation? Is that a powerful revelation? It is. She's telling me like that. What? I just know you didn't spend four or five hours on that. This is the first time I've been able to open my Bible today. Now, who's that coming from? God. That ain't something you just luck upon. Huh? Luck? No. I, don't I was conversing with my wife coming up, but I was praying all the way. I said, now, God, you got to reveal something here. I said, now, you know, I haven't been able to go into the Word. And I said, now, God, you, I said, hey, yeah, you, got to, you got to reveal something. And the Holy Ghost is revealing here. Hmm. As I read this, just the freshness begins to develop here. <laughs> hmm? There's no notes on this. Hmm. I have no written notes. They've already been written in the Spirit. He just let me read them as I go. Right. And when I get to the next page, he's turned it in the Spirit, and I'm reading it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Whew. And then he showed me in the Spirit. He said, there's a footnote right there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, he said, "Go forth from your country, mm -hmm. and, and what? And from thy kindred, and from hold it." He said, "There's a footnote." <laughs> when you think about the word country, mm -hmm. you have to think about a space of land. And that space of land will have vegetation, trees, surroundings, and so forth on it. Mm -hmm. Just like you can go to a place in your town, which might be a park, and you go to that particular place in the park and have some kind of experiences in that park, uh huh, and you build a mentality of association with that particular place in the park. In the park. Will you talk to me tonight? That's a footnote here. Footnote. Step it out. <laughs> <Go ahead. laughs> and so, whenever 
a particular phrase or symptoms or something that is brought up, it can take your mind back to this particular place in the park. That's right. And you can see in your eyes, man, the trees, the benches, the trash can, and everything. But the only thing happened was it was just a thought that arose and brought back to your emotions some information you got from that spot. So that's why I was telling everybody, you got to get even out of your mind what your country looked like. <laughs> My God. He said, because there were certain places in the country that had your bound. Had your bound. Certain locations and trees and valleys and mountains and rivers that you just got to get out of your Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. There have been some party houses uh, that you went to in the atmosphere in the party house and somebody would mention a certain word and all of a sudden come to your vision this party house and, and the room and the chair and the yeah, yeah, pipe yeah. and the cigarettes and, and the folk over in that corner and over in You still you got a connection. That's right. Woo! Woo! <laughs> God, Is that right, Sister Sam? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, if you're not careful, the enemy will even show you how the smoke swirled out of the pipe, how the ashes dropped off the joint. That's why I said, man, you got to leave your country. Leave, man. <laughs> Go. <laughs> <laughs> and from your father's house. From his father's covering, negative covering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? I hear that. Because there was rules and regulations that his father was imparting up on Abraham and out of respect Abraham was doing that but it was causing him not to flow in his greatness hmm. my goodness do you not know as parents we can set the stage for our kids to have a bad marriage That is absolutely right. Yep. I'm going to say it again. Even as parents, we can set the stage for our kids to have a bad marriage, a failure marriage. That's right. That's right. The association. You know it. Mm. <laughs> Where did we hear this originally? Where did this? God originally said this. Mm-hmm. Back when he talked to Abe, talked to Adam. Huh? Mm -hmm. Leave father and mother. And cleave to your wife. And cleave to your wife. Uh-huh. Hmm. <laughs> and then he said, I will, verse 2, I will bless you. He said, to the land. He said, now, and from your father and to the land which, now catch this. I like this because it's powerful. He said, I'm a, I'm a, I want you to go to a land. He didn't show him nothing. He said, a land which I will. I'm going to show you. I ain't showing you right now. Because if I show you right now where you are, you're going to see if there's any relationship to things that's over there before you get there. And if you can't find that, you ain't going. So I ain't going to show you the land right now, because if I show you now, you're going to try to see what is connected to where you are right now. If you can't find something over there that's already connected to where you are now, you ain't going. You ain't going. Yeah, you know that's the truth. That's right. Amen. Might as well say amen. That's right. Yeah. God tell us, show me, Lord. No, I ain't showing you. Because you're trying to find something over to see if it's something similar here. Because if it ain't nothing similar over there, you ain't going. Woo! 
<laughs> Fresh revelation. <laughs> oh, Lord wow. Jesus. Wow. <sighs> y'all, y'all better get. I'm telling y'all, I'm just reading this in the spirit of He said, son, key in on where it says, and I will show you. Mm-hmm. That Jody. But you just go. You just start out. Just start out in the direction I show you to start out. But I ain't going to show you where you're going because if I do, you've been so accustomed. Mm? You're going to say, is there anything I can connect to that what I'm connected to now makes me feel the way I feel? Is there any securities over there that I feel secure in now? Because if I don't see them over there, I ain't going. Is there any folk over there like the ones I'm going to leave? Because I won't feel right if I ain't got sister so-and-so like I got over here that I can converse with. Woo! Ah. <laughs> he said, I will. <laughs> he said, and from your father's house to the land... To see the here it goes again. He said, deal with the land. <laughs> Not a land. Huh? He said, I'm I'm telling you to leave a land now. <laughs> so I'm telling you to leave a land. Mm-hmm. A land. Because there's too many connections to the A land. I want to take you where there's no connection but me to the. The means inclusively. Something that I've inclusively picked out that concerns me and not a land. <laughs> Some of us still bound to a land. When God's trying to get you to the land. To <laughs> read that. That boy just taking all kind of notes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he said, "I'm getting these fresh revelations." <laughs> read uh, verse two. Verse two, and I will make of thee a great nation. I'll make you a great nation. And oh, I will hold it. They, they did it again. <laughs> You know what he was saying to Abram? He said, Abram, there's an identity that you don't know is there. But it can't be developed until you get unattached to everything that's developed you. See, God has not been able to develop us into what... He wants to develop us because we're connected to something that's already developed us. And it's easier to stay with what you're accustomed to. Mm-hmm. Easier to stay with what you're comfortable with even when you know it's all wrong. That's right. Because when God begins to develop, it's something new, and you can't only stand something new. Because when it's new, you can't control it. <laughs> Whew. My God, my time's about up. Who said that? He said, he said, and I will make, and then you know what Keaton, when he read it from the King James and he said, thee, I'll make thee, and the Spirit showed me an inclusiveness, he said, I'll make thee, he was saying, Abram, there's something 
down inside of you that you have not allowed me to bring out of you that is so distinctive and different from what you've been originally formed. Woo. Unlock the tension. My God. He said, if I wanted your daddy, I'd have called your daddy. If I wanted your brother, I'd have called your brother. But I called you because there's something distinctly different about you that's not even nothing like them. And I'm sick and tired of you trying to imitate them because they're already in her hereditary bunny. I want to bring you out and do something new in you. Yeah. <laughs> Stop saying you want to pray like sister so-and-so and you want to get on your knees and read and pray like somebody else and no. lay hands. Hey, that's not the stinking there. Right. Say, God doing me what you want to do. I don't want to be no imitator. That's right. I want to be an original for you. Original. Yeah. Unlock my potential. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Hey, glory. <laughs> Woo. Stop saying you want to sing like folk and play like folk. And... You talking about being connected. God told him, I want to make you. I want to make you. <laughs> I will make of thee a dream. <laughs> See, some of y'all still amazed at the fact that this is the first time I opened my Bible today. <laughs> this is under the anointing. See, and you know what God's doing tonight? He, he, he's showing you that the man of God is under the anointing. My wife knows I have not been in the house long to read no scriptures. And some of these other folk know, hey, this is fresh revelation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Woo! Because I'm not afraid to go into a new arena. <laughs> and he said, I will make thee, you, inclusively, make you. Huh? He was saying, Abraham said, No, I can't do through you and for you. You trying to be somebody else. Because that person you're trying to be is attached to stuff that I can't use. That, 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 that mentality is attached to stuff that I can't use. <laughs> the emotions are attached to things that I can't use. <laughs> That's powerful, sir. He said it. I will make you, read, make thee. I will make of thee a great nation. A great, a great nation. A great nation. And what? And I will bless thee <laughs> and make thy name great. Come on now, come on. And... Uh -huh. Thou shalt be a blessing. You hear what he said? I know you're your daddy's boy. <laughs> Paraphrase it, and you might even be the junior. But your daddy made you the junior. I need a senior. <laughs> huh? so, oh God sometimes we can get so hooked on one and make it you know our boy's the junior that we'll never allow God to make them the senior I hear that that's true we're trying to force them to be successful from our failures. Instead of allowing them to make their own mistakes. Right. 
when we mistake a mistake as a failure. When God has taken failures and made somebody out of them. For all of us were failures. That's right. <laughs> I'm learning this. Huh? I'm learning to find freedom. And it's rough. It's rough. I'm learning to just pray for my kids, tell them the truth. I can't make them live right. But I can pray for them. I can keep them up before God and instill what's right. Huh? And then I can, while they're under the covering, enforce and force things. But once they get out from under my roof, then the clown's on his own. And I'm not going to the circus to get him. He chose to be a clown, I'm going to let him perform in the circus. <laughs> Woo! Wow! You don't like that analogy. I will make you, God says to him, a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. Read the last part of that. And thou shalt be a blessing. And so you shall be a blessing. I know we're really intensely dealing with Abram here at this state. But here's what I want you to catch. The importance. The importance of recognizing how vital it is to sever negative connections. How vital that is. Because God's not able to perfect you in what he wants to perfect you in because you're wanting God to make you into something who you are not. Uh-huh. See, if you're praying and asking God, I'd like to preach like Bishop. Mm. Then you might be saying to God, I'm, I'm going to limit you, God, because you might want to take me to even a higher revelation. Yeah, see y'all. <laughs> huh? We see somebody flowing in the spirit. Lord, I like to flow in the spirit like that. How you know if they just floating? They could just be floating. Floating while they're gloating. Gloating off the fact that they think they're flowing. You might be asking God, you just want to float. All right now. Go ahead, go ahead. Say that again. See, see the importance of God said, Abram, it's vital that you leave this negative connection. Leave it, leave it. Because until you do, I can't do in you what I want to do in you. <coughs> Catching it? Catching that? God can't do in us what he wants to do in us until we see it important enough to break bad connections. Now I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to get ready to close this for tonight. God also spoke a prophetic, futuristic mandate of blessings upon this man that God himself controlled. Futuristic blessings. It was a mandate that God himself released 
into the atmosphere of his presence and his future, even into his day of death. God had released a word that had already penetrated the days ahead before there ever came days in the life of Abraham. God spoke into a spiritual arena of atmosphere, broke through time barriers and seasons, and prepared in the atmosphere Things for Abraham that he would not and would not experience until he actually got there. God had released the word that had already set demons. Put them in place. Knowing that when they day came for that particular time that they would have to step back and honor what God spoke. Abram's presence but after he got yeah. there would have been in his path hmm. that's why he said I know you're going out and I know you're coming in <laughs> I know you're down setting and I know you're uprising now let me show you what God did here powerful Whew. are you catching it? See, if, we, if we allow God to and submit to getting those things broken those hereditary things broken. Here's what God said to us tonight. I will release a word into your future that no matter what the devil tries to do prior to stop, he might hinder, but to stop it, he can't stop it because I've already spoke the word now. And my word is a word of eternity. It's not going to return back into me. When I send it out, it goes full circle and does what it has to do until you get into that time and that season. And I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't care if it looks like it's going to fail. I don't care even if the devil said you missed it. He's a liar. <laughs> the devil is a liar. <laughs> <laughs> read, read the next verse. <laughs> What did he say in verse 3? And I will bless them that bless thee. And I'm going to bless them. I'm going to bless them that bless you. See, so here's what it was. Woo! Oh, Jesus. When Abraham made the decision to cut those ties and go to a place where God was going to show him, mm -hmm. God said, right then and there, my word leaves this spot, goes into your future. Sets up an arena in your future, preparing an atmosphere for people that's going to come at that time, speak to them prior to your arrival, and make them do things to bless you when they never intended to, and they said they wasn't going to do it. Nah. Then he said. Glory. And I'm going to curse them yeah. that curse you. <laughs> That's why you need to be careful what you say about the anointing. Amen. Amen. See, so you get in your heated stage and begin to talk negative about the man of God, you could be releasing your curse. All right. Mm. When you say, I ain't going to hear that. Okay. I ain't doing that. Who do you think he is? Right. Come on. Come on here. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. You just then cursed a word for your deliverance and your blessing and your release. And when you say you ain't going to do it, you lock yourself in. Until you get repent and get released. Yeah. And you know why that rebellion is? It's because of hereditary stuff. Hmm? You picked up some pride out from somebody said, I ain't going to do it. Hey. Hmm? Huh? Read. And I will bless them that bless thee. I'm going to bless them 
I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm going, I'm, I'm going to bless those who bless you. I'm your blessing. Amen. I'm your blessing. Amen. Yes, you are. Huh? See, we, we think, oh, oh, he means you have to put something in his hand before you can bless him. When you speak well and right of the anointing, you bless me. When you honor the anointing that's in my life, you bless me and you end up getting a blessing. That's right. Hmm? If I've done anything to show you otherwise, then you can go to another arena. Mm. And I will bless those who bless you. Now catch what he's saying here. I'm going to bless those who bless you. But to move into the realm of that type of blessing, we got to get disconnected. Because what would he said? Before all this is going to happen, Abram, got to leave your country and your kindred before this will happen. Before this will transpire. Catch it. He was saying, leave the negative. Cut ties with the negative. Cut ties with the negative. Because there's spirit connections there. So emotional connections there. Mental connections there. Willpower connections there. Hmm. He said, I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them who will curse you. Read the last part of verse 3. And... In thee shall all families oh, of the that earth is so powerful. be blessed. And in you, and in you, and in you, and in you, and in you. He was said, inside of you, Abram, there is a seed that has not been developed yet. But it can't come up. Until you get the bad connections off of it. And the bad ties. But there's a seed in you, Abram. There's a seed in you that you don't see. You don't know it. And, and your family don't know it's there. But there's a seed in you, Abram. But it can't take root until it's been able to be broken and planted. There's a seed in you. People of God, there's a seed in you. There's a seed of greatness in you. And he said, and in you, and in you, what? Shall all the families of the earth be blessed. <laughs> That's powerful. He just did it again. He said, and in you, all the families, now catch this. There are various family members in this house tonight from different genealogies, backgrounds, characteristics, and so forth. All having their own distinctive difference. But he said there's a seed inside of you that is so it doesn't matter the distinctness of difference, it can be blessed. Oh, man. <laughs> and in you, all the families of the earth. And when God said that to Abram, he had me in mind. All the families. That included me. And that included you. Oh, 
and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed my blessing coming through Abram was contingent upon him breaking bad soul ties thank you Abram Woo! I'm going to stop we, we're really just scratching the surface here I, the next time we deal with this I, I'm going to show you, even with God introducing this to him, and Abram begins to, le he leaves. We're still going to see that there were things that God had to open up to him, to reveal to him, to let go. Mm -hmm. Abram had a bad soul tie of the fear of dying. He had a bad soul tie with the fear of being hurt and mutilated. He didn't want things to happen to his physical. Uh huh. He, he had a fear of uh, things close to him being taken from him. God said, That's why I got to get you to leave was close to you so I can break that in you. And that's what we're going to pick up. I'm going to show you those things. He said, you got to leave that. He said, because see, you've been connected with the level of fear of things that you think is important that mean so much to you. You're afraid that it's going to be taken from you. And I got to get you disconnected from that. Because it, it, with that kind of fear, you'll never let go. So I can release something fresh in you. Something better than what you're fearing. There was no way he could ever become a great nation until he let go of a lesser nation. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> Did you get that? Did you catch that? There was no way he could become a greater nation until he let go of a lesser nation. There was no way he could become a great name until he let go of a lesser name. <laughs> uh, what you're holding on to, is it worth it? If it's not taking you where you ought to go, stand on your feet, we go pray. <laughs> wow. Woo! <laughs> My God from glory. Did the Spirit of the Lord speak to us tonight? <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Lord Jesus. <laughs> the, 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 this series of teaching is really so profound for our lives. It really is. It really is. I'm learning, I'm learning, I'm learning, and we'll learn so many great things from this. This teaching is even helping me as the leader of this ministry. Hmm? Yes, 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 yes. See, God can be just blessing us tremendously. And we can be bound by the fears of him stop blessing us. Then we'll start taking things in our own hands to try to guarantee the blessing. <laughs> huh? What has the Lord told you? What has God said to you? 
What has God spoken concerning your life? Some of us are connected to bad soul ties and spirits of dealing with uncertainty of things that look like we're going to fail. When God already said, you are not a failure. Why would God speak something to you and not bring it through so he'd look bad? I mean, you think he just spoke that so he could look bad? He said, oh, let me tell you this so I can perform it. Think about that one. <laughs> Woo! I love this. I love this. I love this because of what God... I'm going to give you all another awesome miracle of listening to the Spirit. This week, just this week, whew, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He said, stop into the insurance office and make sure this new building is covered. Because with the type of insurance we had that covers buildings that surround us, if they would catch on fire, we were covered. So my assumption was, 